We just finished our first proving ground, so now when we go to unit modules, we're on to our next assignment. And this will be our final compositing assignment, though we are allowed to use other, we can add our own pixels into this assignment as well. But this is our GIF animation assignment. So GIF animations are animation files that are pretty low resolution because they're made only for the screen. There's no such thing as printing an animation, right? There's only displaying it. And GIF is a type of file format, digital file format, that embeds the animation script into the file. So it will automatically play as soon as the file is open. This is why it's used heavily online. It's used for icons and avatars. And it's really fun to know how it works. The downsides of GIF animation is that it's limited to only 256 colors. That's the most pixel colors you're allowed with a GIF animation because it's one of the earliest types of image format. And that's how it reduces its memory. But because its memory is reduced so severely, that's why it's able to support animation scripts where you can have seemingly an endless number of frames that it just plays in sequence. What you're seeing here is a GIF animation. What we want is not just any GIF animation, we want a transformation. And we want it to transform something that you have already created in the class. That can be your emoji design, like you see here. A transformation means it starts one way, it moves through something, and then ends a different way. So beginning, middle, and end. And in a perfect world, that transformation could then be reversed or reset so that the GIF animation is a continuous loop that doesn't have like a hard cut at the end of it. All right. In order to do this, we're gonna be using all of our different compositing skills in order to turn one thing into another thing, right? So what are the kind of assignments you can use? Well, you can use your setting and you can transform the setting. You can use your creature and you can transform the creature. So in this example, the creature transforms from being a rock to like unveiling itself, like showing its camouflage. Nothing happens to the setting. The setting stays the exact same throughout, but this is showing how you can do a panning shot. But the transformation is entirely in the creature, like emerging from a rock, its rock shell, and then collapsing back into it as it resets. Here we have the transformation of the emoji project, exercise two, which in some ways is a really good one to use because remember those are shape, shape, uh, vector shapes within Photoshop, right? And vector shapes can be changed without losing any resolution. Even though GIFs are fairly low resolution and limited in color, vector shapes can be a good tool for, for how to manipulate them. We're also going to be turning in three things for this project. The first is your storyboard sketch, which I'm going to ask you to do digitally for this, at least attempt it. As long as you have a sketch at the end of the day, you'll get credit for it. But we're all going to try starting with digital sketching. Then you're going to uh, upload your finished GIF, which might have many, many frames. And then you're going to upload your refined storyboard, which is going to be a nine frame storyboard, just like our sketch but you're gonna take frames from your GIF animation to make the storyboard. This is for screen resolution, this is for printing. So this is how you print an animation for your portfolio to show that you understand the steps that go into it. Here's one where the environment changes. And just because the environment changes, it also changes the creature. So it starts to get cold, uh, sleet and frozen rain falls, the creature gets frozen. And then the sun comes out and starts to thaw the creature. Slowly, slowly. This was done while we were in the Texas, you know, freeze. And you'll find more examples in Imgur. This is a fun assignment. You can transform lots and lots of things. You can do uh, using other projects. This is one where The creature is the thing that transforms. But you have a lot, a lot of nice kind of camera movement finding the creature in the environment. 
This is a pretty gory one for Lord of the Flies. This is one I like to show because you can just always do it. You can always set something on fire. It's a great animation trick. So whatever ideas work for you. You can always add something in, right? So you can have your creature setting something on fire. As long as we have a beginning, middle, end. This one just destroys the whole environment, right? And then resets. This is one where the creature sets itself on fire. And this is a good example of where you can add your own pixels. So they, they drew in the skeleton and, and added a lot of the fire effects just by painting it, right? Where we haven't been allowed to do that before. As long as you're starting with something that you've built, then that's enough of compositing. And then some instructor examples. It's always good to keep it as simple as you can, but keep it inter still entertaining to you, right? So, in thinking about um, what I can do with my creatures and with my environment, I kind of want to do something fairly basic to try to teach you the steps. And what I'm going to use is my creature design and maybe a new type of setting. But I could just do it on like a blank background. So, you first want to identify what things you want to use. So, I'm going to go right to digital sketching for this. I've set up my file to be in Photoshop. Just basic minimum print resolution. 8 inches by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch. This is usually how I'll sketch. I'm going to use the pen tool and then set my foreground color to black, background white. That's just the standard. You can always get back to that by clicking here. Then I'm going to set my brush. We're used to this from compositing, but I'm going to be drawing with pixels to be about 80% hard edged, to be about 75% in opacity, and a size of below 50. And then I'm going to draw pretty lightly nine squares, three on three, with space between them. This is a great way to storyboard for social media campaigns. The square is really versatile as a composing tool. If we were doing an animation for widescreen you know, movie display, we would use that as our, our template. But for this semester, for this project, let's use a square. So we're going to tell the whole story we need to tell within nine frames with this rough storyboard. I'm going to take the opacity on my brush down and maybe make a new layer on top of this because now I've got my grid. So what do you need for an animation? You need three things. You need character. That's one. You need setting. That's two. And then you need the illusion of time passing. That's three. It's an illusion because we are deciding in time-based media like this what the audience sees when. And by making sequential images change, it gives the illusion of time passing in our imagery. But it's not like we can just put our image up in front of our viewer's eyes and then let them watch it age. Right? We have to decide how it changes and how long that takes. So character does not mean you have to use your creature or your emoji. Character is the thing that you tell the story through. So character can be as simple, this is what I always use as an example, as a paper clip on a desk. And that doesn't mean it has to look like a, a Microsoft Office paper clip with eyes and arms and it moves. We can just be focused on that paper clip and what if the environment of the desk changes but that paper clip stays the same, right? If the papers move on and off the desk. If it becomes really orderly, and then you see like a, a big bonus check placed on the desk, 
we are experiencing it through the point of view of that paperclip's experience. So it becomes the character. If we're changing a setting, we might have a tree in focus. And that tree might change with the seasons, with the setting. So the tree is the character. If we have a cat and the cat's just on a blank background, right? The cat is the character. We're going to look at that cat to see what the changes are. If that cat coughs up a fur ball and that fur ball comes to life and eats the cat, that's an introduction of a second character, right? So that gets us to this next point, setting. Setting is always there, but it's something we want to be able to control as the artist. So we can give the viewer the setting or the viewer can make it up. So if we just show a cat that's then eaten by its own hairball, we don't think that that's happening in just an empty white void, even if we don't give it an environment. We imagine where that environment could be. We, we provide the setting as the viewer. Does that make sense? It's like comic book strips where Garfield might have a scarf on. Because Garfield has a scarf on, we know that he's probably outside and it's cold. So we'll look for clues. If the cat's wet, you know, we'll, we'll know something about the setting. And then the illusion of time passing, here we do it through sequential images like a comic book, where time is shown as passing as we jump over the gutter to the next storyboard frame. So I'm going to use as my character, I'm going to use my uh, Swamp Fox. And as my setting, I'm going to use a jungle. I'm probably going to use a different setting than the, the landscape I designed, because the landscape I designed is a little too mushroom focused. And what I want to do for my illusion of time passing is I want to make my swamp fox grow out of the jungle, like it's birthed like a cabbage patch kid. It's going to emerge from vegetation. So what do I start with? I'm going to start with what's called an establishing frame. So EST, I love using the gutters to write little notes and ideas. And I'm going to establish the jungle. And so I'm just going to have kind of these ferns. I'm going to try to keep it pretty simple. Then this is the beginning, these first three frames. In the beginning, I'm just going to see this jungle, and especially this fern. These are just my ideas to start with start to move a little bit and storyboards will often use rough storyboards like this will often use uh, arrows to show movement so fern starts to move now i could make this whole thing about the fern and in a way i am right by having that fern kind of moving it's becoming a character but it's not quite free of the setting yet so that fern moves and then we're going to have like a mouth open up in the fern. And I'm just thinking out loud as we go. And I'll make a little note of that. Because I'm going to be working for a few classes on this. Several hours. So I want to make sure this is an idea. is something I'm, I'm interested in. So this is how I test it out. Okay, now we get to the middle. The middle is where you want the, the action to start to pick up a little bit. You don't want to go too fast at the beginning or your audience isn't, is, is going to get lost on something. This is, that's where you're establishing the setting and the character. But here I'm really going to start introducing, I'm going to reveal my Swamp Fox. So he's going to get kind of birthed out of this fern. So his head is going to pop out more and more. And what's great about GIF animations is even if this looks kind of silly, it has a charm to it in this, this low resolution, kind of limited color resolution uh, type. So the head pops out, and I'm going to show the direction. It's going to come out this way. And then his arms are going to come out. It's going to be like birthing a calf. It's coming out of the center of this fern. And then it's going to start having even its back legs start to come out. And its head is going to...